and welcome back to my Mod Showcase series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. I'm doing post commentary for this episode because there's a lot of stuff I wanted to get through and it ended up being about three and a half hours worth of actual recorded video. Uh, so I decided I'd have to edit it a little bit tighter than I usually do. First thing I wanted to get through is finally getting the ATV into orbit. And in fact, not only did I decide to get it to orbit, I decided to send it to the moon. Because I was so frustrated with my failures on the previous times, so I built a special rocket just for this episode in order to get this stuff underway. We're going to be doing a lot of moon stuff in this uh, particular episode, and we'll be seeing a lot of this rocket. The base stage is four main sails and they're attached to the 3.75 meter parts using just stock stuff, no part clipping. It's those aerodynamic tails that I use to attach nine of the LVT-45s in stages sometimes. Anyway, there's the main sail stage going off. And then the second stage is a one of the 2,500 kilonewton thrust ones. I forget what they're called because I haven't used them very much. But you see it, you recognize it's flame and that is the second stage and the fairings come off so procedural fairings used on this otherwise stock parts on the launcher so just procedural fairings but at the top we have the ATV and the ATV in this version has some solar panels some of the flat ones not the extendable ones and also uh, two little uh, winches from Kerbal attachment system, and that's the main mod that I'm going to be exploring in this episode, though it takes a lot of setup time to do what I wanted to do, and that's why I have to cut out so much stuff. So yeah, I'm not actually going to be using the ATV, but we'll see it put into orbit around the moon. Alright, this next stage uh, uses an adapter plate from procedural fairings to attach five of the LVT-45s. So here's five LVT-45s, and again, the adapter plate is from procedural fairings. You can decide however many rockets you want to attach to it, how big you want the adapter plate. You can just ditch all the adapter plates from KW Rocketry or from Nova Punch and just use the procedural fairings one. So we have a lunar trajectory of plenty of fuel to spare on the third stage. Just adjusting that a little bit. okay and then lunar sphere of influence and then getting into orbit will be the next burn and then I'll just leave it there we don't actually do anything with the ATV I just wanted to sort of fulfill the launch of it because I failed twice getting it done so that stage is cleared and with this burn, it will be in orbit around the moon for future use. And we might use it later on. Again, it has two of the winches on it. And that will allow other vessels to essentially dock to it to get fuel. Essentially, it's like a fuel line, uh, an, an extendable fuel line, except you need to send a Kerbal out to grab it. All right, so uh, we'll leave this be for now. It is in orbit. And maybe some other episode will make use of it. We'll see. Okay, going back to the VAB, no, actually to the launch pad. And now we're going to launch the assets we need to show off Kerbal Attachment System. And this is a refueling rover. And a refu refueling rover with a, what you call it, a, a skyhook kind of thing. Except we're just going to land it. We're not going to use Kerbal Attachment uh, System to lower it. We're just going to land the the skyhook and drop the rover off and that'll be that. You'll notice that it's mounted backwards that's why the artificial horizon the nav ball is opposite and of course anytime you have the nav ball opposite you you will unfailingly forget the fact that you have the nav ball opposite at some point during your mission and of course burn the wrong way for a bit. But yeah, so same launch rocket that we used on the first, the ATV mission. And I'll just use this same launch rocket each time. It's a little bit inefficient. Uh, okay, it's actually a lot inefficient. But it does have the benefit of being very reliable. 
and it will get whatever you want to send to the moon to the moon. Okay, so uh, there you see the rover mounted backwards there and its uh, carrier unit. I guess it, calling a skyhook is not right if, since it's not actually lowering it. I thought about uh, using the Kerbal Attachment System to actually lower the rover down, but that wasn't really the function of Kerbal Attachment System I wanted to highlight. Really, I wanted to highlight its uses as a base building tool. And while the whole skyhook idea is fancy and, uh, well, frankly, difficult too, I didn't. That that isn't really what I would use Kerbal Attachment System for. So here I'm just creating the maneuver for the moon encounter. There we are. And just a little bit of uh, fuel left in the second stage to get us into Earth orbit. For some reason, when you th throw this one down, uh, down to very low amounts of thrust, it doesn't produce much sound, which is a little bit strange. I was disoriented for a sec there because of that. Okay, Kerbal thinks we're in orbit, and that's that stage. Separation. And then the five LBT-45s. Okay. That's the end of that burn. There are two burns. And so I have to readjust and after doing so, take care of the second burn. Remember, we are backwards, and so here I got it right. Here you'll see me pointing retrograde on the nav ball when actually I am going prograde here. So that one is good. There are lights on the rover. I didn't forget that. You'll see a certain red glow on one side and there are white lights on the other side. Unfortunately this is not going to help out once we actually get to the moon as I discover uh, having lights on a rover is not the same as having landing lights. Okay getting close just trying to get it right. I prefer to make sure that my Lunar approaches, not lunar, lunar approaches are within 100 kilometers, and that's good. Well, that's good now. Okay, so here is the moon sphere influence again, and this time we're going to try and make a landing. First thing, of course, is to make sure that when I do the retro burn to get into orbit, I point in the correct direction. Not that hard. Again, I, all I have to do is point in the prograde because I want the thrust to go retrograde and everything is backwards. Okay, so we are in orbit around the moon now. And so this refueling rover is going to, as you can guess, it, uh, refuel things. And it's going to do that because it has a winch on one side and it also has one of the receptacle units on the other side. Uh, what is it called? Radial attachment points from uh, Kerbal Attachment System. And it has both so that it can do flexible work. It can take fuel from a fuel tank that has one of the winches. And it'll use its radial attachment point for that. And then it can also deliver fuel to any other vehicle that has a radial attachment point using its own winch. Okay, so now we have a landing spot, and I don't think I need the third stage anymore. It's done its duty. So we will detach it, decouple. Yes, I'm probably considering whether I should just use it for a descent, but there we go. Now you'll notice that we have only half fuel, or not half fuel, two-thirds fuel here, and that's because while the skyhook-ish thing is fueled up, 
the rover itself does not have any liquid fuel or oxidizer. It's empty. And that's because I wanted to demonstrate the use of the Kerbal Attachment System to transfer fuel, among other things. I also wanted to demonstrate its use towing things. That's the two functions I wanted. Uh, transfer fuel and to tow. So here we go, picking a landing spot. And I go with this crater even though it seems to be somewhat in the dark, hoping that my lights will be enough, but they aren't. They aren't. Uh, it's not too bad on this run when I'm landing here. But later on I'm gonna find out that it's uh, not the best spot to have picked. So lots of landings on the moon in this one and proximity landings. Of course I'm gonna have to get the fuel tank here. And so it'll have to be landed in the same relative spot. And so, as usual, I'm using a lot of fuel to do this. I cut out a lot of time in landing. In fact, most of the three and a half hours was me landing because I take so long with these landing runs. I No quick save or quick load. I did get them right the first time, but I took a lot of fuel to do it. Okay, so here we are, landed on the moon. Now on Kerbin, I had tested that I could get the rover out between the legs of the vehicle. Now I, I'm actually adding fuel to it, I don't know why. <laughs> I, I decided to transfer fuel to the vehicle, uh, whatever. Okay, so I did that. And then once I did that, it isn't full anyway, so I could still do some random stuff. And then I undock it. Yes. And then, like I said, I had tested on Kerbin that I could get through the, the struts. If I could just turn it properly. But the thing is, on the moon, you don't have as much traction. So on Kerbin, I had the traction to get it through. But on the moon I had trouble, but eventually I managed it. One of the struts decided to uh, to take pity on me and give way. I'm, I haven't am i have done rover stuff on the moon in a very long time, and you could probably tell that by the way I'm controlling it, because I, I forget that traction is not much of a thing on the moon. Uh, I did go to docking mode. I forgot to turn off SAS here, but uh, yeah, traction is not a thing on the moon. And what you're about to see here is me discovering that the hard way, as, as, as I decide to quit playing around with the rover, I put on the brakes and immediately realize my mistake, but it's too late. The, the rover goes all turtle on me. I do take some time trying to flip it around, but it doesn't have enough reaction wheel power to do that. Uh, it's The only thing it's got is uh, uh, the control unit, and that doesn't have much torque. Okay, but I decided to continue with the next launch, which is the fuel tower. And the fuel tower has Jeb in it, on it in a cupola module. So it's just a cupola module with a 18-ton fuel tank and lander legs and some of the cute little orange radial rockets. That's all that's on top of this rocket right now and we're going to deliver that to the moon. Unfortunately it's not going to have much to do yet because our rover is flipped over but at this point I'm debating whether to send another rover or whether to somehow develop a new vehicle to save the rover that's already there. Ultimately I decide to just send another rover because Trying to use the magnet to flip the mo ro other rover around wasn't the best idea. And actually sending another rover would probably do the trick as far as saving the rover that's already there. As I'll show you uh, later on in the episode. So this is all preliminaries. This is just me setting up the situation where I can finally use Kerbal Attachment System. I could have, I could have just tried something on Kerbin and just showed you how it worked. But I didn't want to do something so mundane. Uh, thought about it. Thought about it doing the mundane way. Of course, then there was the 
airplane option. Could use an airplane with the Kerbal attachment, uh, with, with a winch to do some fancy stuff. But on that score, I didn't have enough faith in my piloting abilities. I was pretty sure that I would have so much frustration trying to use an airplane to demonstrate Kerbal attachment system. A VTOL aircraft that you hover over and then like, grab a probe or something. I was pretty sure that that would just uh, make me tear my hair out. So, so I went with this option, even though this took a little bit of setup time. So here we go, Jeb on his way to the moon to try and save the situation with a huge fuel tank. But here I encountered the problem of it being very dark in that crater. So here you can see the craft attached to the third stage. Very simple. Literally a fuel tower. It's got uh, little rungs for him to climb down on on the other side. What I really should have done was mount the lander legs a little bit higher. Uh, not only would that have lowered the center of mass so that it was likely to, less likely to tip over, but also it would have meant that uh, he had less of a jump from the bottom of the rungs to the ground and that uh, the Kerbal attachment, the hinge, uh, not the hinge, the winch uh, would be easier to grab for him. Okay, so getting into orbit around the moon here. There we are. Jeb is, of course, always thrilled. And I decided to take a look at what his view is like here in the cupola module. Okay, other than that, now it's time to try and rendezvous. So that's another burn to try and adjust my trajectory to match the inclination of the target. The target being, of course, the little rover I've already landed there. Okay, third stage away. And this is the tricky part that takes a long time, right? Uh, if the first landing took a while, just because I'm always overly cautious while landing and use an overabundance of fuel, this one takes really some time because I'm trying to hit that spot there. Still need a lot more practice on this. I can do it, and uh, I did it on the first take, but I'm I'm not good at it. So there you are, uh, getting close here. You can see how I approach things, and somebody's probably going to tell me how I should do it better, and it's true, it's not the best way to do it. Here I'm just going with what works and what's comfortable. Or perhaps more precisely, what I think is safe. And, you know, I definitely did not want to lose Jeb at all. And so this was a safe approach. Very slow and careful. Very, very slow and very, very careful. And I managed it, I think, uh, definitely within 100 meters. There you see 62 meters, 63, somewhere around there. We do have landing lights on this one at least, but it is very, very dark. Plenty of fuel left over though. Okay, we're down safe with Jeb, but now I have to decide what to do about the situation with our flipped over rover. Obviously Jeb doesn't have much to do now that he's landed on the moon since the rover is not going to come over and grab some fuel or anything. So I decide to do another launch with the same rover. No new adjustments, just this time I'll remember not to press the brakes. 
I also think about the fact that the crater is on the dark portion of the moon right now and decide the time warp now in order to get into the light side but this of course is a really stupid idea because by the time I launch and send my craft to the moon it will be on the dark side again right so yeah sort of a miss on my part there but here we are uh, I added some more lights to the launch vehicle and of course this is backwards again because it's the rover Okay, I'm waiting for it to stabilize because it's pushing around a lot and I don't want it to hit the launch clamps. So that's one reason to light the rockets before releasing the clamps is to make sure that it's stable and it's not going to hit the launch clamps on the way up. So nighttime launch of course and I'll cut most of it out because this rocket does just fine as long as it doesn't hit those launch clamps. Here we go on first stage separation. And the second stage is lit and we continue. Fortunately, I learned some lessons on driving the first rover, so this time I was at least confident that I wouldn't... Uh, I'd take the time to make sure that I maneuvered it properly. And also, I decided that I would have the skyhook fly away instead of trying to maneuver the rover between its legs. Okay, that was the end of the second stage. And just checking things out. Separating. And I think we get to wait for Apoapsis here. Nope. Nope, still had to thrust. There we go. Okay. Ah yes, I was able to burn out of periapsis in order to get to the moon, which was an efficient thing. So that's good. Always nice to be able to go out from uh, from periapsis. Yeah. And ah, there we go. That's me burning in the wrong direction because I forgot everything was backwards. Had to happen at some point, but just blindly turned to the maneuver node and thought I was going the right way, but no. I have to go the other way. Okay, once again getting our transfer to the moon. A little bit closer, a little bit closer. 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 Okay, there we go. Alright, so. Next, Lunar Sphere of Influence. And of course, the Retro Burn in order to get into orbit. Pointing prograde because everything's backwards. Okay. That should do it. Burned short of the maneuver there because the maneuver node was actually straying and I knew that. Uh, but of course I couldn't see the maneuver node straying. So, a bit of a complication. Inclination burn to adjust my inclination to the position of the target. Okay, that's pretty a good inclination. I ended up doing another retro burn, I think, before finally separating the third stage. And that's the third stage away. And then with the rover turning around to the right direction, knocking the third stage with one of the lander legs. And there we go. Now everything is oriented properly. Again, uh, the rover itself is empty of fuel, so that's why we only have two thirds fuel. And just making the landing.
Okay, you can see my approach. Same as always. This is sort of my pattern. I go high over the target and uh, basically drop down close to vertically. Just like that. Alright, so this is actually higher than I usually do. We, we're basically 10 kilometers directly over the target. And of course this was a lot longer than you're seeing it here because basically I kept it to this level of thrust for a long time. Finally, finally we're getting to the part where the lights hit the ground, we're within 50 meters of the target, which is actually the flipped over rover by the way. And we're down. So, this time I decided to not transfer fuel because that really didn't make much sense anyway. And decouple. Come on. Decouple. And then I decided to lift off, well, after putting the brakes on of this rover, uh, lift off with the carrier vehicle. Okay. Now I didn't decide to just whack it against the ground or anything. I decided that the best thing to do would be to land it again. Just in case. Don't have any plans to use it for anything, but no point wasting it. You never know. It's got a docking port on the bottom. Could always be sent back into. I don't know if it has enough fuel to get back into orbit and perhaps dock with something else that would, would refuel it, and then it would be able to carry something else back down, in theory. Anything with a docking port can be reused for something. Okay, so here we've got our rover, and this time I'm gonna be very, very careful with it. Getting it over to the big fuel tank so that we can finally demonstrate Kerbal Attachment System. Okay, docking mode, SAS off. Headlights working nicely though. We pass by the, the forlorn toppled rover as a reminder that I should be going very slow and carefully here because there is no traction. And of course that I should slow down before attempting to apply the brakes. Pass by the other carrier also. We sort of got a little uh, little community of vehicles here on the moon now, and that's why I think I might I might decide to continue using this save for future mod mod showcase episodes. I think the next one I should do is actually the home Bobcat's home uh, home mod, and that was recently updated. So I wanted to take a look at how it was updated. I decided to time warp here in order to get it into daylight, though frankly daylight is not that bright on the moon. And then it's time for Jeb to come out so that he can make use of the winch to refuel the rover. Not that the rover needs, the, uh, the ro I should keep calling it a rover, it's actually a tanker. It is a refueling vehicle. So yeah, again, I should have mounted those landing legs a little bit higher so that Jeb didn't have to make even that much of a jump. And he walks over. And there you can see the winch. That is a radial horizontal winch. As you can see, it's description there. There's also a radial vertical winch. And then there's a normal stack vertical and stack horizontal. So you just grab the connector and it just attaches to your Kerbal like, like you see there. 
And then once you get over to the other vehicle, you can see that the rover has a winch of its own, but we want to go over to the radial attachment point if I can figure out how to press W, A, S, and D properly. And once we're closer than that to the radial attachment point, get it closer, closer, then we can right click on it and say plug docked. And we want it docked so that we can transfer the fuel. If it's undocked, then you can't uh, treat it like the same vehicle. So right now the, the fuel tank and the little rover tanker vehicle are one, ve one vehicle. Now that can create some complications if you're going to mess around, but and I'll leave you to discover those for yourself. But right now I just wanted to transfer the fuel, so let's do that. And so uh, basically it's sort of like a, a, a refueling station. You can create a refueling station like this. You can have fuel pumps, have your vehicles drive over to the fueling station, get the get the nozzle into your vehicle and that's it. Now I'm going to decide to undock it but keep it plugged. So now it's plugged and undocked. Uh, except I actually realized that I have to transfer, uh, change to the vehicle and have the vehicle do it because Jeb doesn't have control over the plug anymore. So I'm going to show you the GUI here. Uh, you've seen it before but here's the GUI and I'm going to say I'm going to undock it now, so now it is not docked. So now there are two separate vehicles that happen to be connected by a cord, and I'm going to do the inadvisable thing of attempting to topple the fuel tower. <laughs> uh, I, I, I intended to do that. I, I was just curious to see whether this little rover could pull what, what is still a pretty heavy tower. After all, it's still got the cupola module, and it's still got the fuel in it. So I'm going to try and bring it down. And oh, and a slow collapse. Now, if I had a winch on the opposite side of the fuel tower, I'd be able to pull it back up again. But uh, the, pulling it like this does not help. It will just drag it along. Now, to make up for the fact that I decided to topple that tower, I decided eventually after. <laughs> after messing around with this a little bit and seeing what the tolerances were here. Yes, okay, that's enough of that. I eventually decided to try and set my other rover right. So I'm going to try and winch the other rover back to a useful position and I'm going to have Jeb ride the, ride the vehicle. So Jeb, get on to the rover, try and keep it from doing something silly. But yeah, actually uh, one thing I contemplated doing and might have done if I had enough time is send another vehicle over that had a magnet attached to the winch. And the magnet allows you to attach to any vehicle even if it doesn't have an attachment point. So what I do is I'd uh, just use the magnet to grab the fuel tower and set it upright. Oh, here we go. I unfailingly have trouble with uh, Kerbals on EVA, so but anyway, got him on there. So let Jeb drive carefully. Jeb drive over to the other rover, and we're going to have Jeb try and get that other other rover upright okay I think you gotta be have to be on the other side Jeb just looking at where the where the winch uh, we'll we'll use the that winch on the on the toppled vehicle and connect it to the radial attachment point on this vehicle since obviously the radial attachment point on the other vehicle is facing the ground right now ok 
Okay, Jeb gets in line and then backs up. But maybe a little bit too close there. Okay, be careful with the brakes. Alright, now we have to get Jeb to grab that winch from the other vehicle. So, he will make his way over there. Now we have to get pretty close to these winches, so I try it out to see what the range is, but even here is th that's not possible. And I don't know, I think it's similar to the kind of range that uh, you need to get data out from the goo cans, for instance. So even here that's not possible, so I have to uh, use the EVA pack to get him up. Uh, come on, Jeb. EVA pack up. Okay, yep, now grab that. Okay, grabbing the connector. And obviously, this time we want it undocked, so we'll just uh, connect it up, plug it in. and that is sufficient. So Jeb will get back to his seat if I can figure out how to maneuver him properly. Oh man. At least the animations are fun. I'd feel so bad if the animations were bad for him falling over. Okay get into the seat before you fall off. Alright, now can we write this rover? We'll have to be careful about it. Up, up. And yes, yes, it is it is good. The rover is ready for action. Ooh. Okay. We should switch to the other one and get its brakes on too. Come on. There we go. All right, so I think you get the idea. Um, this is hardly uh, a complete view of all the functions of Kerbal Attachment System. I mean, you could do a lot more with this. And uh, here you see I'm going to just retract the cable on this winch just for, I, I don't know why, just cleanliness. I guess. But anyway, there's a lot more you can do with this and not, you know, you can let your imagination uh, figure it out. But as far as base building is concerned, you can already see some of the usefulness. I mean, how often have we had vehicles that have toppled over, for instance, or uh, left them unfuelable? So all you have to do is really make sure you have at least a radial attachment point and a vehicle that can make use of it with a winch. And you're basically all set. I mean, there's, there's a lot you can do with your little colony that you weren't able to do before. And, uh, I mean, this is all uh, flexible fuel lines and everything. So, however you like to think about it. But yeah, I think uh, we've got a nice little colony here set up. So I might decide to use it more if, if some of the other mods allow for it. Because... Uh, uh, there is a clarity issue because I've got all these mods already in this install and whether I, it'll be clear which mod I'm using if I decide to if I decide to add another mod into it oh I just wanted to retract the one that I was using here just cleaning up a bit so yeah Jeb uh, is now on our lunar colony we should probably get some place for him to live so that's why I thought up uh, maybe highlighting the home mod next. Uh, so we'll, we'll we'll look into that. But yeah, so uh, there you are. This will end it for the three nifty mods uh, episodes. So Probotronics, Hulkam, VDS, 
uh, fmrs uh, we did Kerbal Attachment System, of course, um, what you call it, uh, oh yeah, uh, Infernal Robotics, and then Procedural Fairings. So we've uh, taken a look at some of the functions of those mods, you saw the Procedural Fairings in this one as well, with the, not only the fairings, but the uh, attachment plate that allowed me to put five of the LVT-45s in the third stage. So. But there's a lot more that could be done uh, integrating these all together. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with making sure that we have reusable rockets and also that we have a very interesting functional base. And so here Jeb uh, exploring with his rover, getting it up to speed slowly because of the traction. And yeah, on that note, I think... Uh, I'll thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.